Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. I want to do a video on the Detroit Red Wings because I feel like lately there's been, well, since the start of free agency, there's been a lot of negative talk about the, uh, you know, the Iser plan uh, with some of these signings that he's made. Uh, you know, Detroit came in the offseason with a ton of, of uh, cap. Uh, they're a young team, a ton of cap to spend. Um, and, you know, they brought on guys like Comfer. Uh, they waived Zadina. Apparently, they're talking about buying, or terminating his contract. They brought in Ghost. I mean, they brought in a bunch of guys that are like Sprong. Um, you know, it, it's just they brought in a bunch of guys in free agency. They spent a ton of money. They only have about $9 million in cap space, I believe. So they spent a ton of money in free agency this year, uh, addressing some needs that probably could have been suited by some of their prospects. So it makes me think that maybe they don't trust some of these prospects yet, or maybe they're not intending on being that good again this year. Um, I mean, the Comfer move is pretty good. The, I mean, the Comfer's a good player. I think he's overpaid, and they gave him probably too many, you know, too many years, especially considering how many young guys are going to have uh, over the next couple of years that come up via prospects. But um, the Ghost move is good. He can quarterback that power play, so that, that was a good move. Uh, Zadina, I, I understand that they don't have now they don't have space for Zadina anymore so that makes sense to me why they get rid of him, he just hasn't worked out they terminated his contract, maybe they can do that, and they tried to trade him but nobody won him, they waived him, nobody picked him up so terminating his contract where a team can bring him in at league minimum uh, he'll get another chance somewhere but I don't think uh, I don't think he's going to hit his potential, we'll say so some of these moves I think make sense but then, you know I just think to where they're at, like, in a couple years, they're going to look at that comfort contract and say, hmm, maybe we should have done that. The Sprung one, I think, is going to age fine, but the comfort one, I think they're going to regret a little bit anyway. Um, you know, Detroit's a team that finished relatively poor. They fell in the standings late in the season because um, they sold at the deadline. They they did. They, they got rid of uh, a few pretty solid pieces there, like Bertuzzi and Roenick. Um so they sold at the deadline and kind of dropped them further in the standings than they actually would have finished because Detroit actually made some pretty good steps this year. Um, at one point, they were actually pushing for a playoff spot. And then, you know, they sold and then they fell. So it's going to be an interesting year for Detroit. Um, I, You know, they pick up Lyon as a goalie. Lyon looked good for Florida. Uh, he, he's actually, he saved their season. He brought them into the playoffs. Um, he played fine in the playoffs when he got to appear. But is that a good enough sample size to justify bringing him in and, and probably making him your starter? I'm not sure. You know, they bring in Helberg as well. Um, you know, he's got some experience in Detroit. So um, I, I'm fine with that move. Uh, I, I just feel like they probably should have kept Nadelkovic, number one, especially at 1.5 mil. They could have kept Nadelkovic because he played solid for them at the end of the year. Uh, he seemed to get his groove back and played pretty well for them. I think that their goaltending is going to be their biggest weakness. Um, you know, defense-wise, their defense is not awful, but it's not great. But they do have some prospect defensemen that will be up within the next year or so. The problem is, it's when you spend this much cap, you're basically saying, oh, we're done with our rebuild. Like, we're, we're ready to compete and we're ready to win. Mostly, Most of the time, I would say, okay, when you spend that much cap, I would agree. But it's what they spent the cap on. Uh, it's with the positions they spent the cap on. It's it's the term, the you know, the average the average value that they gave these guys. They overpaid for a lot of them, and they gave more term than they should have for pretty much all. So, uh, I, the, my favorite move they made is the ghost move. Uh, ghost can quarterback that power play, and he's only on a one year deal. So if it doesn't work out, you trade him at the deadline. You know, say you're not in a playoff spot, you trade him at the deadline, you flip him for some assets. That's good. That's my saving grace for them like they, if they can like some of these guys they can move at the deadline but i just feel like they they spent the money in the wrong spot they didn't address their actual needs they got older for no reason like i would get it if they got older and got like if they got older we could say that they definitely got better sure i'm all for spending the cap and then going out and making these improvements but i don't think these necessarily tip the scale for them i think that if anything, they just kind of balance it off compared to what they lost and what they are now. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, the Atlantic is a, it's going to be a tight race. Um, 
you know, between the, the three teams at the top of last year, Toronto, Boston, Tampa, they're still going to be in the mix this year. Boston and Tampa are probably going to take a step back, but they're going to be in the mix this year. I also do think Tampa Bay uh, has a better year this year than they did this past season. Um, three Stanley Cup finals in a row. It, it takes a toll on you. Tampa Bay has a, a good roster still. They have to fill it out a little bit more, but they still have a good roster. Boston, they don't have a number one or a number two center as of yet. So Boston's going to be a big question mark for me. Um, going into the last season, I thought they were... I was one of the few people that actually had them finishing in a playoff spot. I was one of the few people that actually had them... Uh, one of the few people that I've seen or that I talked to anyway. I can't... Obviously not across the whole world, but like one of the few people that I talked to, I was one of the few that actually had them winning the Atlantic. So I didn't think they would have a historical season by any stretch of the means. I just thought they would win the Atlantic because Tampa Bay just went to three cups in a row, and I'm not a Toronto fan at all. Toronto probably wins the Atlantic this year. Um, but other than that, you have a pretty wide open race. Like Florida is still a fine team. I mean, they're injured now, so maybe they fall out early and struggle to get back in. So Florida. They'll be in the mix. Uh, Ottawa's going to be in the mix until the end. Detroit's going to be in the mix. It's just, it's one of those things. I mean, you can, some people are going to argue that Montreal's going to be in the mix. I don't think so, not yet. But there's still an argument to be made that the gap isn't that far off. Um, so there's a lot of teams in the Atlantic that are, are, are solid. There's a lot of teams that are young and, and coming up there. And they also have the Buffalo Sabres, who finished two points out of a playoff spot. Um and they're a young and exciting team. They have cap, and they have a lot of really good young players, and they have a lot of really good young prospects. So the Atlantic is not going to be some easy easy met or easy or division to just waltz into the playoffs. Like for the Metropolitan, I can probably make an argument for just about every single team to make the playoffs over another team. Like I could see any of them making the playoffs because, number one, two of them in uh, the Capitals and Pittsburgh, they're old. They're kind of on the back burner but they're still potential playoff teams you know the rangers they were a young team but they kind of soiled that with some offseason moves that they made i'll get into that you know carolina is a relatively young team they're going to be at the top of the division near the top of the division again the, um, the devils are going to probably be one or two in the division because they're such a good young team and they added and then you have the big question mark is columbus uh, columbus they're going to be young they're going to be healthier than they were this year. They'll be better, but I don't think they're necessarily a playoff team yet. And then obviously the one that I can say that's definitely not going to make the playoffs is going to be the Flyers. It would take a, a psych, like a it would take like a miracle for them to make the playoffs. They just, you know, they're selling. Their top prospects aren't coming over yet. They're just not in a spot to where they should even be trying. So the the Metro, I can make a case for a bunch of teams based on moves they made, moves they could still make, cap they have trades that you can make stuff like that i can make a case for a lot of them but for detroit in the atlantic it's hard for me to sit here and say oh yeah detroit has a clear path to the playoffs because x y and z well i don't think they do because buffalo is a really good young team ottawa is a really good young team with some veterans now i mean drew has a career a career resurgence there um it's just gonna be tough like even they could in theory take both wild cards the atlantic but that's still only five teams. Like, they'll have, even if we say Boston misses, they'll have Tampa Bay, Toronto, Tampa Bay, Toronto, um, Florida, Ottawa, Detroit, and then Buffalo. That's six right there, not even including Boston. So it's going to be tough for any new team in the Atlantic to make it just with the current playoff setup. So we'll see what happens with the Islander plan. I think it's too early to to really get in on him because he he wasn't the one that started this rebuild. Um, you know, it, he can he came in. I think it was the twenty nineteen the twenty nineteen off season. Um, so, but well, I mean that is four years ago already. But most teams take that four to five year time period to actually do a full rebuild, and that's when you start. You know, that's if you're starting it from start to finish. He, he didn't come into a, a really deep prospect pool. He didn't come into any really good young players. Like, Larkin's good. I really liked Larkin. But he's been there for a while. He's not, like, a good young player. He's been there for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, they really missed on Zadina. And then his drafting really started after that. So that 2019, that 2020. Like, 19, I believe he made the pick. 
but it really he did more of the scout like he got more of his people into more of the scouting from 2020 2021 22 and then obviously now in 23 so in theory if you take away all the moves they made they should still be within a you know, rebuilding for the next one or two years which is not what Detroit fans want to hear because it's been like seven years already but that's the problem when you move on halfway through from a GM, halfway through a rebuild. You shouldn't do that. You know, if you're going to rebuild, you should stick with the same regime unless it's going poorly. Stick with the same regime all the way through. Or if you're if you know you're going to rebuild, house the old regime the start to start the rebuild. Get your new regime in there and then rebuild. That's what they should have done. Um, ultimately, they messed up that way, and it's going to delay them a year or two. So. I think they probably finish around that 80 to 85 point range again. Um, I like they didn't improve. I don't think they improved in any in any way, except for well, actually, I can actually say that they might have you know gotten worse as a goaltending, and the goaltending is a big a big part of it. So unless they make some drastic off season off season move uh, for the next like two months that they have, they still have a lot of time, so they could. They need another winger. Um, they need another center. They should, I mean, they, they really need, they need a, a scoring winger. They need a good two-way center. And then they need another, uh, top four D-man. They also need a starting goalie. That's four really big needs. They have some of that in the pipeline. So that's not too concerning if they're willing to wait another season. But if they're trying to make the playoffs this year, they need those four things. So maybe, maybe they're in on to bring it. Maybe they make a trade for a goalie, too, and they have two of the four. Then, they, then, we're, then we'll start to get into it. Maybe we can make a case for it. But I don't know. If you're a Detroit fan, let me know what you think uh, because it's just a very curious It's a very curious time for Detroit because it just seems half-finished. So they're not done, in my opinion. I think they're still rebuilding for the next season or two, um, but his moves would indicate otherwise. So if you're a fan of Detroit, let me know what you think. We can, you know, have some dialogue in the comments section and we can go from there. Um, you guys could like, comment, subscribe, and uh, you guys have a good night. I'll talk to you soon.